going on, everyone? This is Benjamin Dixon for Your Black World and The Benjamin Dixon Show. And I wanted to take a minute to talk about the tweet from Rupert Murdoch, the billionaire Australian owner of News Corporation, which is the parent company of Fox News. Uh, last night, Rupert Murdoch tweeted out a, uh, <clears throat> a congratulatory tweet for Ben Carson and Candy Carson. And in that tweet, he stated uh, or asked the question, what about a real black president who can bring um, unity on, along the lines of racial unity? I'll put the, the actual tweet on the screen. But um, I had to stop what I was doing so I could talk about it um, because of a, a couple of things besides the obvious, right? It, it's kind of absurd to have a um, have anyone, let alone a white person, assert that, um, suggest that our president is not a real black president. Um, even if he's half black, you know, this is the country that said if you had one drop of black in your blood, you were black, right? So then that's the low hanging fruit. And it, it is absurd. It's, it's insulting. And um, he has since apologized for it and retracted his tweet. Um, but that's sort of par for the course. That's what people do when they put their foot in their mouth. Um, but I want to juxtapose um, what he said about Ben Carson being a real black president um, with what Professor, Professor Anthea Butler said on the same day about Ben Carson, and she was derided and lambasted by um, conservative media, Professor Butler stated that um, Ben Carson would win Coon of the Year Award. And immediately she was attacked by all of the propaganda machines, all of the different conservative media outlets, um, lecturing her, saying that she used a racial slur. Um, and, and then no sooner that same exact day uh, Rupert Murdoch decides to tell us what a real black person or what a real black president would be and asserts that President Obama is not a real black president. So <clears throat> it's that glaring contradiction um, that, that I want to talk about, that glaring hypocrisy, rather, that I want to talk about because of the attack on Professor Butler for... And here's a woman who is a uh, deeply rooted in the African-American experience, born into the same experience, who has made observations about Ben Carson that she feels is detrimental to the African-American community. And she summarized it by saying in, you know, fitting it into 140 characters, summarizing it by saying that he would win Coon of the Year award. Uh, you know, there's plenty of African-Americans who would agree with her. You know, Ben Carson is, uh, in a lot of respects, he carries the token line. He carries the uh, agenda of the white male Christian power structure in America. And he is not a threat to that power structure. In fact, he is a, he defends that power structure. So for Althea Butler to make that, um, I'm sorry, Anthea Butler, I uh, apologize, to make that observation, whether you like the words she chose to use or not, it got the message across and made it clear. And so now they have asserted that she's not capable, um, that we should not be able to decide or, or, or call out Ben Carson on things that we as African-Americans disagree with. You know, that we don't have the right to determine that what he is doing is detrimental to the black community. Um, but then they want to turn around and tell us on the same exact day what a real black person, a real black president is. So I, I just think it's a glaring um, level of hypocrisy that's nothing new. But I just think it's uh, the absurdity that shows you the level of absurdity that exists in America where African-Americans cannot... Um, we cannot decide for ourselves what real blackness is. We have to have Rupert Murdoch, a white, an old 84 year old white man from Australia, dictate to us what a real black president should and should not be. Um, and all of that is still somewhat of the low hanging fruit. I want to talk about this assertion that a black person a black person running for president has the responsibility of healing the racial animus and the racial divide in our nation. Um, Notwithstanding the fact that Fox News, uh, a, a, a part of the News Corp family uh, that Rupert Murdoch founded, Fox News is one of the leading voices in opposition to President Obama, not only for political reasons, or even if it is for political reasons, they definitely use the dog whistles of racial animus to accomplish that end, right? Rupert Murdoch and his, his cronies and the, their propaganda machine 
by far, they are the leading cause of the racial tension in the United States of America. So notwithstanding that, um, that hypocrisy, but it's the assertion that a black person is going to be responsible for healing something that white people did. You know, this, this is not, this, you know, we're talking about hundreds of years of, of a racial divide. There's no racial divide in the last eight years that was not set in motion um, long before, long before any of us were even born. So the, the absurd notion that a black president is responsible for fixing something that they broke, uh, I think, is a slap in the face. Um, and it also shows the... Um, the fact that they want to abdicate their responsibility to fixing the problem that they created. They want that responsibility to fall on us. And so the question is, if you get, uh, I was speaking with one of my professors this morning and he was saying, um, are we expecting a female president to go in and fix all the problems of females, uh, of women? Are we expecting a Hispanic president to go in and fix all the problems of a Hispanic person? More than that, what we're saying is that do not these white men who are presidents have a responsibility to fix all of the things that America has broken in the past? Or do we have to wait for a particular demographic to get in for them to fix the problems that white America created? So I, I think that was a... Um, <clears throat> Something that jumped off the pages to me, not only the hypocrisy, but what he's saying uh, in the subtext of his tweet was that something like this has to be fixed by a black person when it wasn't black people who broke it in the first place. Um, that's th that's the second observation. Um, last but not least, I, I think it's ironic that you find the only type of black person that is acceptable to people like Rupert Murdoch, Fox News, and the conservative agenda here in America, the, the, the strong right-wing agenda that is prevalent in America, um, the only type of person that is acceptable to them or a real black president is um, a person who carries their agenda. They will not support or promote anyone who is a threat to their agenda. Um, and their agenda is to conserve the status quo in America that Bill O'Reilly himself defined as a white male Christian power structure. So anyone who is a challenge to that status quo is not acceptable. And so long as Ben Carson and Herman Cain and Alan West and all of these other black conservatives are willing to protect the status quo, well, then they're just the exact type of guys that they consider to be real blacks. Um, and, and that's just the... That to me speaks volumes about where we really are in America. Um, you you can be black, you can be Muslim, you could be you could be whatever you want to be, but you just can't ch challenge the power structure in America. Because if you challenge the power structure in America, well then there's no you know they have absolutely no use for you. So um, I think Rupert Murdoch said exactly what he meant, um, and I think that. Uh, ben Carson is exactly as black as Rupert Murdoch wants him to be. Dr. Watkins, I'll talk to you soon. You guys have a great day.